The next thing I would do, so I have this so far. Okay, so a, a simple way to start messing around and getting your, your loop sounding cooler is to start messing with pitch automation. Uh, it's pretty much all, it all comes down to pitch for me at, at least. Let's, uh, I'm gonna slowly pitch rise that bleepy synth. So I'll, I'm creating an automation by editing the pitch wheel here. And I'm gonna bring the range of this pitch down to one octave, which would be 12 semitones here. And I will draw in an automation box down here Double click on it, and I'll start from zero, and I'll go all the way up. So it'll go one octave up, and now it'll sound like this. And, and, and then from there, you get to, you can do even more pitching, maybe on the bass line. Or, uh, but let's, let's move on from the synth right there, and let's create more drums. So the next thing I do is I'd import a clap sample. And I have a go-to clap sample. I think it's really important to create a group of sounds that you love, that you want to be part of your specific sound. So I've used this clap probably for the last four years and haven't changed anything about it. All right, so it's just, I'll copy and paste that so it fits the whole thing. And now we have a clap. So if I had that, I, I could get stuck on this and keep listening to it over and over again. But what I do to not drive myself crazy is I start building it immediately as if this was the final result. This was the drop right here. So I would copy and paste this till it was 30 seconds long because generally my drops are around 30 seconds long. <coughs> and I start adding things and taking things away. So let's take away those claps for the first... 15 seconds, and those claps will come in for the second 15 seconds. And now I'm going to create a new channel. And for those first 15 seconds, a trick that I like to do is I like to layer a clap sample on top of the kick for the first 15, and for the second 15 seconds, I'll just have the clap, maybe a ride on top. But let's bring in the, that clap that I like to put in the beginning. So I'm going to create a new audio track, and I'll import. <coughs> called 128 clap reverse right here. It's a very simple 808 clap little loop that I like to use. And it's usually a little loud, so I'm going to drag down here, which is going to bring down the volume. And you can see over here, this is letting you know how much volume you're bringing down. I just brought it down about 2 dB. should be fine. All right. So now it's going to sound like this for the first 15 bar bars, or first 15 seconds, sorry. <laughs> So that's the clap. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the mix, but if I take it out, it actually adds a lot of atmosphere to it. And I, let's bring a ride right in here. Import. And I'll just bring in this ride. All right. And I'm going to bring down the level another 2 dB on that ride. So here we go. Okay, so you get the gist. It's kind of boring as is. So the next step I would do is I would take out, for every four bars, I would take out the last four. Maybe for every eight bars, I'd take out the last one. Sorry. So it looks like this. So I take out that last one, and this is where I'm going to add some sort of a fill. It could be a drum fill. It could be a synth fill. But that's what th you're going to create more excitement and it's going to sound more interesting if you if you add fills in so it doesn't just sound like a loop going over and over again because truthfully electronic music is just loops over and over again with slight changes that make it sound interesting but it's just repetitive loops um an another thing i might do 
I'm what I'm hearing is I want it to go bump ba ba bump bump ba bump 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 So to do that, I just need to extend that last note. And in the pitch, I'm gonna make a little quick pitch down. Oops. Pitch down at the end. Cool. So where that where that was empty is where I would put a some sort of a fill in. Let's put a fill in there. Let's let's keep building this. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail. We, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.